Okay, we're here. Day three, Wednesday, can. Saving the best for last. This is my last can episode. And it's Kathleen Hall. I guess I could introduce and give your accolades, but chief brand officer at Microsoft for how many years? I, I don't know how long I've been that, but I've been at Microsoft 15 years. 15 years. Uh, and two years ago, marketer of the year at Cannes. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But welcome, Kathleen. Yay, thanks for having me. And she's one of my dearest friends. So let's, let's start there. With, yes. Uh, everybody says that, but actually, we yeah, are really true. good friends. Like so, coffee talk. So, yeah, it's like coffee talk. Your voice, <laughs> your voice is a little my scratchy. My voice is very today. sexy. Yeah. There was a little bit of celebration last night. We won something fun and, you know. I like that. We won something fun. Like you won like a $5 scratch off lottery. <laughs> Why don't you tell the audience what you won? We won a Grand Prix last night in uh, design, and it was for a little project called AdLem that we worked on, which is not a little project, actually. Maybe tell, tell now that we've talked about it. Okay, now we talked about it. Okay. There's, there's no brand. I love all the brands we work on, but I have a, a deep connection to Microsoft. I've worked on it probably 15 years. Because you believed in it before anybody else believed 2007, it. 2007, <laughs> 2008. Yeah. Uh, but tell, tell, tell the crowd. That's how far we got. We try to do two things, right? Help people's lives and maybe help change the world. And if we can do both, it's usually a good thing. And uh, there were these brothers who had a vision for a nomadic tribe in Africa. It's the Fulani tribe. has no written alphabet. Mm. So if you don't have a written alphabet, you can't really connect to the digital economy ever because you need to use a keyboard and you need to be able to you know, write and, and read in your language. So what we do is we created that alphabet. It's kind of like the parallel I say people go, oh, it's that alphabet thing. Go, it's not an alphabet thing. It's not really a font thing. Font is like you're just making it pretty. That's I, I not... love how people just, you know. Yeah, like they, they diminish it right it. away. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's that, that word. Yeah. You made, made up one word. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like if you spoke Mandarin and the Mandarin characters didn't exist. That's what we had to create. So... Um, that's been the project of about two or three years, and you know, McCann was super into it. You know, literally designing the letters with the the culture, with, with people trying it and saying, "Does that work? Does this one look too much like that one? Does that one sound too much like that one?" And the great thing about it, I think, is, um, you know, the alternative was that they were sort of bastardizing Arabic and or French, which were two colonial powers that they had been subjected under. So that's not really great either. Yeah. So this is kind of like a freedom thing too. Yeah. So it's a really, really great project that combines design and culture and, you know, humanity and technology. It's hard to win. I, I, I think we uh, can. Everybody said there's a lot of awards. There's lots of lines. But like winning a Grand Prix, there's not a lot of those. Yep. Uh, and you know, you've won them before. And, and uh, marketer of the year. So you started, say, 15 years ago in different different jobs on the business unit Windows, side and yeah. Windows, uh, and now, obviously, you're chief brand officer and really responsible for all the amazing work over so many so many years. But how do how does Microsoft get from magazine cover when Crispin Porter Bogusky won it and Alex Bogusky was on the cover? I, I, he's a very good looking man, so he put was. him on Fast Company. And, I'm sure he still is. And it, I mean, yes, him, yeah. yes. <laughs> Alex, you're always yes. good looking. No great yes. hair. Yes, uh, and. It said, "Can this guy make Microsoft cool?" Yep. And I, I always thought that was like a incredible the fact that it was you know an ad advertising for sound the, the cover of Fast Company back then was pretty yeah novel. yeah. Uh, but you know you have made Microsoft cool, and I don't think it's because uh, you try to do cool things; it's you help people do very cool things. I think uh, you know we're not cool; we help people do cool things. Is the right answer? Like, and and I think you know you and I both saw early. Um, you know, Microsoft kind of recruited me. So I was like, well, who, why would you want to work at Microsoft? They're the fat guy in the, on the Mac, on the PC ads getting mm -hmm. beaten up. Like what? And then when I went out and met people and heard about the company and their commitment and what they're doing, and I was like, wow, they're great stories here. Great stories make great marketing. And I, you know, you, you were there. <laughs> we connected and we're wow. like, you know, one of the things we did, Rob's always had a great exercise, you know, write the headline you want to see as a result of the work you did. And they incorporated that into my interview process. They said, write the headline you want to see. Oh, wow. And my headline was Microsoft outmarkets Apple. And then, so if you think that was the aspiration, yeah. winning marketer of the year, I would say, and it's not, you know, it's not just about Apple, but aspiration is a great marketer, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that was the dream, and it kind of came true. Yeah, the, uh, you know, Apple's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, I haven't, great company, like you said, and, and, and by the way, you know, one company being great doesn't mean another company can't be great. And even right. for us as holding companies and, and networks, like, I kind of want everybody to do well. You yeah. Know, you want to win, but for sure, like, the most important thing is that in the industry wins. And for brands like Microsoft and Apple and Google and all these other, like, 
in, important to people, important people's lives. Yeah. But you know, your mission at Microsoft is to uh, empower people and organizations to achieve more. So I think you start with that when you look at all the work that you've made with with some some with me and some with other partners and and uh, other companies. It all comes out of that mission. Right. It's crystal clear. And I think that's the example that Apple set. Like you, you, you have to have a clear vision and a clear uh, sort of mode of execution and a clear outcome you want. It's just clarity, focus, simplicity, and then a lot of trust and honesty between partners. So let's go back to the beginning. You know, Kathleen, very fine place. The, way, the, way, the way beginning, because you have a very interesting, you know, family and uh, a lot Who of- Who doesn't? A lot of- <laughs> yes. A lot of police officers yes, and, and nurses, other type, nurses yeah. and like, what part of you know uh, the family did you come from? Since you're uh, in this wildly creative position and doing great things, and you have your your family, you know, doing amazing things as police officers and detectives and commissioners and nurses and and all those things. So. Do they look at you like you're the sort of the, the fancy one, the fancy oh, yeah. creative person? Oh, yeah, they think I'm super important, which makes them punish me constantly. No, I think, you know, I come from a blue-collar background, which I think is what helps me be successful because at, at Microsoft even, I'm, I still am an outsider after 15 yeah. years. Not in, a, not in a they leave me out kind yeah. of way, in a, my perspective as an outsider yeah. because you can get in the bubble of anything you do, whether it's automotive yeah. or tech or food, or, and you have to keep that perspective of well, what does a normal person think? So I have a lot of those normal people. Yeah. Oh, I use the term loosely, but um, not. Yeah, exactly. Gary. I mean, normal. Yeah, 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 my, yeah pretty, nor like, pretty normal, yeah. Gary. You know, he's, yeah. What do you, you describe him as? Paul Bunyan, right? Yeah, yeah. My friends call him Paul Bunyan, but yeah, because he likes to cut wood and wear flannel. But anyway, um, yeah. So I think I think I was supposed to be the lawyer. You know, mm. I, we, I've told you that story, and my dad was the cop, and the next generation, that's the hope. Yeah. And I uh, kind of broke his heart because I clerked for a summer, and I realized it's yeah. not LA law. I yeah. thought it was L.A. Law. It's not L.A. Show Law. L.A. Law. Remember L.A. Law? It was a great law, yeah. Great, a lot of Boston legal aid. Made it all yeah. look good, but it was, well, so did the ad shows, right? Yeah, for sure. So it wasn't what it was cracked up to be. So I had an uncle, not an uncle. We called him Uncle Fred, but my dad and, and his buddy had season tickets to the polo fields. That's how long ago. Wow. But no, the Bronx, uh, uh, the uh, Giants in the Bronx, oh. in the polo fields. And Uncle Fred was in advertising, but I didn't know what that meant. And he said, I think you'd be good at this. You should send your resume to this person. Really? Wow. Yeah, and back then you didn't. So there was someone. That, yeah, there was someone who said, yeah, yeah maybe you'd, you'd be. Yeah. Maybe you'd... My grandfather was an artist. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I think that's where, I mean, I'm a writer by, by trade, but uh, was an artist. And, you know, when you growing up and seeing these paintings on the walls, and I still have some of the paintings now in our house. Wow. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, but you know, I had to make. Threads. Yeah, he could make a, a big living at it. So he also worked in, in retouching advertising. Oh my God! Back when artists were, you know, literally not you know, not using computers, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So, chief brand officer, explain what that is. I mean, obviously, marketing is a huge part of that, but it's bigger than even marketing. right. So maybe talk it's an about unusual. That. It's kind of an unusual collection of things, which even makes the title a little weird too. I think maybe they didn't know what else to call me. I have brand, and I'll tell you what that. And I have yeah. what. Basically, all the advertising, the big campaign work. Then I have media, and I have research, which sometimes seems a little weird for which me. Which is it's, pretty rare for, yeah. for one person to have. But I think when you think about, think about it, like it's also connected. So yeah, it is so connected. And I think the odd one out a little bit maybe research, and it's my favorite. Hmm. It's my favorite in a lot of ways because no let's, great. Let's unpack that <laughs> that word in a podcast forever. Let's unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a little. It's Suzanne Powers, one of my best friends. She's always said, "We're gonna do a little digging." These phrases <laughs> just make me crazy. Unpack that feels like psychotherapy. Yeah. I don't like it, but anyway, it uh, the, look, no great work in my mind ever comes without a great insight. Yeah, and research gets you to insights. The other thing is, in a sea of kind of engineers, when you have to make a case for something, you can't just say subjectively. I know this. A lot of times, I do subjectively know. It's like, trust me, this is good. When I first saw that adaptive controller, I'm like. This is going to be amazing, and we're going to be able to tell stories with this. But what you have to do is you have to you have to share data that convince yeah. people of things, and that's what you know research can do for you. And also, you know, as a listening device, like right now, social media for us is essentially a giant you know focus group. We're, yeah, we're constantly watching. What are the phrases people are using? What are the t what's the terminology? What are they? Where are they hot? Where are they cold? Where are they negative? Where are they positive? So, yeah, it's been it's been fun to have that in the portfolio. Well, I mean, I and, and I think the agencies and when I was at my former place, McCann, I remember when I I left Crispin, started our our, our you know journey started at Crispin when I was there, 
and then went to McCann. And I went to McCann. I said, uh, you know, we, we had won the business, and there was, was this team in, in, in London said, hey, uh, we want to find plastic in the ocean, you know, using Bing. Can you take this idea to Kathleen? Because they knew we had history, and I, right. I, I go, well, do we have Bing as a client? Because we have Windows. That's we don't have Bing. Uh, no. Uh, do you know somebody at Bing that's passionate about finding plastic in the ocean? No. Do you know someone at Microsoft that's passionate about finding uh, plastic in the ocean? And they go, no. I go, well, then why would I take this idea, which is noble, but really isn't solving a business problem? I go, what's Kathleen passionate about? And they're like, well, then we asked Kevin Nelson, and, and they said, well, she really wants to get women into science. You know, they have a business problem and a, you know, a bigger issue. Social there's not, problem, yeah. Social problem, there's not enough female engineers at Microsoft or in general. So I said, well, why aren't we bringing her a thousand ideas around that? And you've always been really good at sort of cutting to, wh why are we wasting time on, on chasing these things when right. there's so many things we need to either solve or talk about, like the adaptive controller that are wonderful. And we ended up doing some work, wanting, winning at Can, yeah, kept winning at Can, and more and more. And I think that's part of the reason we ended up at Market of the Year a couple of years ago was because um, the focus. It, it, you've never lost that focus of like, let's not waste time on this stuff, but being open to also things that maybe you weren't prepared to make. You know, finding yeah. money and, and finding opportunities. Yeah, it's not wacky if it's in the vein of what you want to accomplish, right? No. It has to be. You know, that connection between what's the kind of social good and what's the business good. I, mean, I got asked that question yesterday in the Titanium Jury, and I'm like, we still have to, we're in business still. Like, it's yeah. not just about doing great things. There's mutual benefit when you do great things, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, and so you, it's you good to remember. And you, and you don't know how people make decisions anymore. I think this notion of like, well... It's purpose led, so but it's not really selling a product, or it's not. But how do you know? People choose brands. At least I choose brands for the things they're doing in the world, also. Right. Like Dove is a perfect example of like if I have to choose between one facial cream and another, I'm at the the the, the shelf. I might choose Dove because I actually like what they're doing, what right. they're standing for, besides right. the product being you know. Right, but Dove product. like Dove's a great example to me. It's in line with their product, like yeah. their philosophy and the, what the benefit they're bringing to the world is in line. It connects. I think you know you can't. It, what's over is the borrowed interest thing or yeah. the, the virtue signaling. It's yeah. got there has to be real mutual interest. And yeah. when you're as big as Microsoft, it's not like I'm worried some jury's going to call me out. The world's gonna call us. Yeah. Like we can't we can't bullshit anything. Like yeah. it, and it's never enough. It's never big enough. So you got to make sure it, you're gonna have material impact, and it's all true. You know. Well, that's an interesting point of like, um, forget the award show. Obviously yeah. We want to win. I always say it's the awards are the byproduct of doing the right thing. Yeah. By our clients, you know. Not we have never people. said, and you know that we've never set out saying we want to yeah. win something ever. We say we want to do great work. And and the world judges it. The internet, you know, yeah. is an yeah. amazing thing and a horrible thing sometimes because we know if something's great or it lands in culture immediately. Yeah, you know? almost We don't have to wait until yeah. we get to can uh, to decide if uh, th this is a, <laughs> a smart move or a, a dumb move. So what's yeah. the first piece of creative work that inspired you? Ever? Yeah, ever. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think before I knew I was just, you mean in the, when I was working in the business or just a person? You know, Kathleen, as All you right. can tell, we, we don't prepare. We don't do pre-reads. <laughs> okay, okay. We don't the do The first do time. I don't know. I, yeah. yeah, I think the first time I, I think I told you the story. I've ever said to myself, wow, like a commercial can change people, was the Native American crying by the river. It was a public yeah, service. Talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, and I literally as a kid, you, you know, you, you forget. I had this argument a little with it. I well, should, by the way, little. it's an international audience. It's okay. going to all the... Oh, okay. So explain, explain what it. this, this okay, ad is. So basically... Us Americans know of a certain age. Yes, yeah, so of a certain age. Because it ran it, yeah, back in the day. Every they, day. Yeah. So basically, if you were in your pajamas watching your cartoons on a Saturday morning or you're watching reruns of Abbott and Costello <laughs> on oh, PIX, yeah. like... The, there was a, yeah, there was a John commercial 11. that would run, Here's which was a, a Native American man walking along a river where there was like garbage, like literally like or, or a highway. Oh yeah, he's walking. Oh, I think river, it was whatever the highway. highway. The journey, okay. Uh, he's, now you're ruining my story. I know. I, I'm boring. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> Kathleen's like, shut the <laughs> f up. But you could be right. But this is what I remember. Yeah. Okay, so um, basically, it was you know before recycling, we didn't have any of this. Like you know, we forget. And there was, you know, a, a garbage everywhere. And it was depressing and sad. And he just turns and looks at camera. And I don't even remember the line. Yeah, yeah, probably a line. Yeah, You're yeah, going to remember yeah, it. I can't. But all I remember is a, t a tear went down his cheek. 
And I was like, oh my God, it's devastating. And you know, I, ha- I I was about to say I had a little argument the other night with a Gen Z who was saying like, you know, basically our, us, you know, baby boomers did nothing. I'm like, I'm sorry, wait. Um, the EPA was established. Recycling came to be. Um, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, Civil Rights Movement, women's. I'm like, yeah, we were kind of involved. So people forget, but it's also a story of what can change positively so fast. Yeah. I think about it. We didn't even have recycling as I'm sitting there in my pajamas and I'm sitting here now in my linen pants and like it's the, you know, it's the norm. We've changed the world. Yeah. There's not garbage in rivers anymore. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, to me that was like a, I don't know if I consciously said, aha, I want to be in advertising, but I'm like, wow, like I really feel something when this guy cries and like it matters and I can't, I yeah. can't throw my garbage out anymore. But like, when you watch it now, it seems. It, it's a little hokey. It's a little, it's a little hokey, hokey, yeah. In the full garb yeah. of, of, you know, that. So, yeah, I mean, to, what in, I mean, now it would be like cultural appropriation yeah, you'd, you'd, and like, we'd all be, and the guy was really fired. Native American. He was Italian or something like they, they'd make, there'd be, there's a lot of trouble to be had. Research on his name. Is but it had heavy. impact. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, and in general, I think you know, I come from a big kind of Irish, Scotch, Irish Catholic family. And like, you got to be a good storyteller. Yeah. Like you, if you want room at the table, there's two things you have to do. You have to be good at getting it out and you have to be good at defending it. Yeah. And those two things I think served me really well in this business because you can, Tell a story. You can simplify. And telling a story is sometimes about simplicity. You got to simplify yeah. things. And then also, you got to defend it. My interview, by the way, when Uncle Fred said you might be good in advertising, I sent my resume. You couldn't look anything up. There's no Bing. There's no Google. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where it stands. I don't know. No research. Like the worst prepared interview ever in my life. And when I get in, the woman who was interviewing me, we start debating the Jets and the Giants. And at some point, I say, Are you going to ask me any questions? She goes, What do you think I've been doing? I go, this is the interview? She said, yeah. I want to see if you can make an argument, hold an argument. You're like, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Awesome. And like six interviews later that day, I got the job. Yeah. I went home. My dad's like, what? How much are you going to make? I go, I don't, know. I don't know. I forgot to ask. I just said yes. But then there was a number, right? It was 10000 a year. Oh, yeah. yeah, as an assistant media planner. And by the way, the company was why not. The power, I think. CMOs have and, and chief brand officers have and, and, and brand managers when, you know, creative people are showing you ideas, you know, it's like, it, you know, it's such a high and low. You want people to like it. And I'm sure you want to like everything that is shown to you, too, yeah. which I think is, we, we, we think it's easy uh, or like, oh, it must be easy to be a client because you just tell people you don't like it and then you have to go away. But I'm sure it's hard because you know how you're a creative person. So you know how much work is going into this. But see, things. I think you taught me this more than anybody because- there's beauty and clarity. Yeah. And I think it's it's even the more emotionally vested you get creatively cuz you I take too long to say this isn't going to work and here's why. Which the other thing is just so I don't sound like a bitch. No. I didn't just I hate it. Get out of my oh, office. No, 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 I would no, say no. yeah, I do. I would yeah. and that's why I or I would say I fucking love it. That's yeah. one yeah, of my yeah. best. But when I when I go no yeah hate it but I would say here's why yeah and no way we weren't mean yeah yeah weren't mean about it but yeah so but it takes a certain kind of person yeah. you know, on the creative side to want to have that and yeah. we, you know you worked on you know, like what yeah. kind of teams what kind of but then that honesty goes both ways yeah. like we really believe in this idea this yeah. is gonna you know and a lot of it it's not like the old what I've always loved about working with you and the team um, is it's not like here's your strategy. Tennis match. Oh, I just broke up the microphone. <laughs> um, here's, and then you hit it back. Here's your serve back. Yeah. And then we're like, and and somehow we're not hitting the zone. Yeah. yeah that's stupid. Yeah. Us, it's more like a rugby scrum. Like we're in it and we're, we're, we're handing each other the ball and we're like, oh, that's not the right direction. Go back, you know. So anyway, I feel like it's more of a workshop. Yeah. It's always been, you know. Well, because <clears throat> I would say Kathleen is, is so good in edits, you know, but I would like, People like, oh, we don't want the client to come to edit. So like, no, no, I want Kathleen to come. She's better at doing editing than some some creative people are. Uh, <laughs> I love and editing. And but the other so thing, are you. That's the other thing you're passionate about is is music. And I'm doing a, a panel at the WPP Beach. Uh, I'm introducing a panel around sound and music and the importance of it. Uh, but you've always said, well, what's the sound? What's the music? What yeah. what's the tone we were going for? Like. Yeah, obviously it's important, but why do you think it's so important? I think it's the fastest short hand of emotion there is. Mm. So, you know, you get up in the morning, you turn on music. The first song you, you hear is something's going to stick with you or put you in the mood. Like, I want to hear, um, I, I want to be up. I wanna, or when I clean, I got to put energetic music. I got to I gotta have energy. Manolo's there. an EDM fan. Did you know that? I don't electronic, even know what EDM. Oh, electronic okay. music. Oh, I don't even know. Electronic that dance music. Okay, listen to me. For yeah. me... It ended in 1982. Like, no good music came after. Well, don't say your favorite song of the last song, because that's one of our rapid-fire questions at oh, the end. Oh, I don't even yeah. know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm a huge 70s. Look, 70s had everything. You had disco. You had great kind of like, you know, 
rock and you had great sort of middle of the road, you know, yeah. Eagles kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was nothing better. Eagles were good. Yeah. yeah this yeah. I could listen to nothing but 70s the rest of yeah. the Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'll get serious for a second here. Like, you have a giant job. Microsoft's doing exceptionally well. But what's there's got to be some challenges for you. Oh, there's a lot of challenges. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges a lot of us face is maintaining focus on the importance of building the brand. I think there's so much short-termism and quarterly reportism and Wall Streetism, which is all important. But, you know, I think this whole thing of the hardest concept that people need to grasp that are not on the marketing side is equity, right? There's equity in the brand. So if you build it up early and fast and sustain it, it allows you to do so many other things. People are more likely to try your products if they already like you. They're more likely to pay more. They're more likely to stick with you when something goes wrong. And they're more likely to recommend it to other people. All that's yeah. value. And the, the value we look at is like, did I put a quarter in and get four quarters out this month? Yeah. And it's like, that's not that's not what it's about. So I think that's the hardest challenge is making people understand this is a portfolio approach. You gotta, you gotta be sowing for the future while you're reaping yeah. today. And you gotta have your eye on where's that field moving like it, you know, generations change and, and attitudes yeah. change and you change it with it. Well, during the pandemic, you know, teams became like people's lifeline. And uh, I and I don't think if, if the pandemic didn't happen, I don't think teams, I don't think Zoom, I don't think these things would have taken off as much as obviously they have. And they're such a part of, you know, obviously WPP, we, we're deep into teams. We use yeah. them all the time. And uh, there's been some great collaborations. You know, FCB did a great collaboration with Michelob Ultra and Microsoft. Yeah. With the screens, you know, the team. Yeah, and the NBA. Yeah. The NBA and one here at Big and Can. Yeah. Like, it was super meaningful. But, like, you think of how important that was. Well, the was. draft. I think the NFL draft yeah. was another Oh, yeah, it was example. a great one, too. You know, in COVID, I think what we did is they were, you know, of course, a nervous wreck because they're used to that being a big, you know, show in, yeah. in, in Vegas. And I think it humanized the players again. You got these kids in Indiana sitting yep. on a leather couch with their yeah. parents, or you got Goodell in his basement. Yeah, yeah, you know? Roger Goodell with his it Barker had a, lounger. It had a positive effect yeah. in a lot of ways. But that, yeah, it was cool. You talk about the NFL, and you've been in uh, Microsoft's been in the Super Bowl a number of times. Yes. And uh, one in Can, big part of winning in Can with the adaptive controller was this kid Owen, who's a big, big star, disabled uh, kid, but like one of the bravest, coolest. Badass kids around. Amazing. And I asked you about him. He was the star of the, the, the Super Bowl spot, and you can find it online. And um, I said, how's he doing? You're like, he's still around. So I love that you stay in touch with Owen. Yeah, yeah. Years later. Yeah, it's mostly Carol. Carol Hutchinson. Who oh, works yeah. Me. She has these, you know, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember? Um, Carol's a superstar. Br She's Brandon, you remember Brandon from, uh, he was the kid that we, we fitted the artificial. Oh, movie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, he's like. Like a high school kid, he's like, he's, yeah. and, and so she keeps in touch with those. Also, we get Christmas cards from people. We get, you know, it's fun. It's kind of fun to see all that because they're all real people, right? Living lives. Yeah, I love though, and it's cool. It's a great campaign. Yeah, so great um, campaign. You have probably have many. What's the proudest moment in your career? I think for me, because of who I am and where I'm from, and what went on behind the scenes, piece on Fifth, the ad we did, where we we first of all. Explain for the audience okay. what Peace on Fifth. So is. what Peace on Fifth was this is a good this is a good example too of the collaboration, right? The agency came with an idea, and we were we were talking about like the holiday season is a time to like put, check the weapons at the door, stop the nonsense. Yeah. We're all in this together, kind of thing. And uh, they came with an idea of the the Microsoft Store and the Apple Store sharing space. They're in the mall. Like, how about we bring them cookies? Are we doing? It? I'm like, we're not bringing them cookies. Like, so we iterated on that, and we said, hey, in the World War, when when the, the kind of the Germans and the and the English kind of put down their weapons and sang Silent Night, like these are stories. It's great. What's our equivalent of that? So we thought we have a Fifth Avenue store. They had taken over what was the F A F A O yeah. Schwartz building. We'll march down Fifth Avenue and we'll. We'll sing them a holiday song. We did it all, all you know, the Apple employees had no idea. No idea. Coming. So the degree of difficulty on so many levels. So first of all, um, yeah, one we, shot. we auditioned our own employees to be the singers. Yeah. So we pulled that off in about a week, and we had a ridiculous number of submissions, but they were amazing singers. And we flew them all here. So we created our own Microsoft choir at a real yeah. people. Then we wanted and augment that. So we had the Harlem Children's Choir join that. We had Joel Simon, the guy I met on, he's a saint and a friend of ours, like dealing with these amateurs, trying to make music. Then we, I had a really, I had a song in my head I wanted and it was Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. And it, it you know, was never used before. 
Yeah. The woman who wrote it would not give us rights. She'd been asked before by a lot of other brands, wouldn't give us rights. And Sean on the business wrote her a letter and explained to her what we were trying to do. And not only did she give us rights, she gave us rights at a great, great she gave us a great price. So like it was yeah. all these obstacles. The night of the pre pro was when the Paris attacks happened. Yeah. So all the permits that you have to get to like shoot in New York City yeah. were all yeah. pulled and like crazy. I had to call every cousin, brother, aunt, uncle I had that knew somebody. Your brother Tommy he, was what yeah. chief of police. What yeah, was I mean, he's a he's a uh, I don't know what he is anymore. He's retired, but yeah. he's a one star chief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe two stars. I don't, I don't want to get that wrong. He'll yell at me. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Tommy, we're don't don't yeah, hit me. Yeah, Tommy, I don't really. Very, I saw pictures of you. You're very strong. <laughs> He's very, very strong. big and strong. Um, yeah. So with the degree of good difficulty and the emotion around it, and and the fact that it was my city, you know, it's my hometown. Yeah, yeah of course. Like I thought, wow. Yeah, I, I feel like you know. If I you agree. Could, that's, I, I would yeah. put that up there for me too. And also, that was all handheld. No video village. We didn't know what we got. Eric Joiner. Who, who directed Eric? Eric Joiner. Yeah. yeah, we didn't know what we got. So it was all of that, and then it came together, and you're like, what, what? And like you said, the Apple employees, you got one shot at this. They're not going to yeah. be surprised were, the second They were time. blown away. They, they were, came out, people yeah, crying. Was crying, really yeah, it was really. Well, I think it's a, that's a great story because, you know, we're here at Cannes. There's a lot of lions, and obviously everybody wants the golds and the Grand Prix, but winning bronzes is impossible. Getting on the short list, this is really hard. There's like 50, 100,000 entries, and like 2% get yeah. awarded. So, but. You know, Nick Saban, the great coach of um, Alabama, you know, he, he says you, you have choices. You know, you, you can either be average, good, great, excellent, or elite. You know? Yeah. And to be elite, what, re what is required is, like, this level of commitment. And I think what's interesting of, like, having won Grand Prix and you've won Grand Prix and done great work, like, what it takes to make some of these ideas. Yeah. Like, it really is hard to do. I always say someone, so much pain, someone has to cry. Hopefully it's not me. But Yeah. Um, but it's it's difficult. So talk a little bit about, like, you know, obviously you've made so many great things. But it's just so the audience understands, like, it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't no. happen with, with ease. Just getting these ideas through your own organization. Yeah. No, I mean, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and you have to you have to care. You got to give a shit. Like I, I sometimes think I annoy people with the level of how much I give a shit. Like we've had things where like, you know, sound mix changed on a on a you know version to version. I'm like, who the fuck changed the sound? Like, what are you guys doing? And you're like, oh, we did. You know, like yeah. so Kathleen noticed that we changed the notes on the back end. <laughs> Like, of course she did. Yeah, yeah. You so yo-yos, because you feel it. Yeah. So you have to, you have to really care. I think yeah. you, I think the way to get great work through an organization is to keep as few people as possible involved. That's it. And I, the one beauty of what I have is I don't really have to sell to anybody. Yeah. Like even the super, our first Super Bowl spot, the Empowering Us All spot. Yeah. Great. You know, spot. it. I. We did not do. Or I did not do. Our so. CEO saw it the day before it ran and said, "I don't think you should run it." <laughs> And that was one of those badge on the table moments. I'm like, yeah, I think we should. So, you know, that kind of empowerment is great for me, too. You know, well, I have to ask the the uh, question of the week, which is AI. Yeah. And we, you know, we were just up at Microsoft, Mark and, and the whole team meeting with Satya and and, and, and others. And uh, you had said, you know, we're pretty good at AI, so maybe don't <laughs> we don't spend too much time on it. But WPP is very deep into it. We've invested lots of of time and money, we have an amazing guy, Stefan Pistorius, who runs our technology, and we met with Ali from from your side, and yeah. he said you guys are really advanced um, for for a company that's not doing doing AI, but you guys are doing it and have been doing it for a very long time. Yeah, and uh, talk a little bit about like how you feel about it, how you feel about it in creating advertising and and and, and creativity, and then where is it really going to end up? Yeah, I think I'm like a lot of us. Like The primary use of AI up to date has really been sort of data usage, right? Like how does it sort through stuff, help us find answers yeah. and that kind of thing. The generative AI, as we call it, the, the creative part of it is is where we are now. And I think I'm like a lot of people. I'm like, uh, I, don't know. I don't know about this. Somebody asked me on a panel here like three or four years ago, do you think it will be making creative? And I said, I don't know, because it's all about patterns, right? And isn't great creativity about breaking patterns? Like, if you took all the data on what makes a great Broadway show, you'd never get Hamilton. You'd never get a rap about a obscure historic figure, countercast. Like, that. that's what makes it art, right? But I do see now, having done what we've done, I don't know if you've been down to the beach house, but, like, the ability, A, to do some of the groundwork, like, to do some of the initial yeah. kind of, like, filtering and ideation of things, and on the visual side, I, for those of you who don't know, the Microsoft Beach House, we um, we felt that the creatives felt the same way. Like, I don't know if I want to 
use an image creator. I'm good at what I do. I want to yeah. do it the way I've always done it. So we had our creatives, um, any partner agencies that want to participate, create sea creatures. Yeah. And the process of them engaging with the technology, you saw them go from like, I don't want to do this. I'm probably going to hate it to like, I cannot stop doing this. I love it so much. Yeah. Which is, a, you know, you love that as a as a marketer. You're like, there's emotion and energy there. And the, the stuff that came out is mind-blowing. And the thing that I realize is I can't do that. The creative brain can do that because yeah. they know what the – so it's going to be now the art of the prompt, really. Like, what do you yeah. put in to get get out? And they're just stunning visuals. And the thing I also love is – the people who did the creative, who did these creatures, their personality and their background and their culture, all these things come through. Like yeah. one guy's a huge saxophone fan. He made an octopus that looks like a saxophone, which is cool. We have a team still working in Kiev um, in, in Ukraine, and they did an octopus that kind of looked like a, a Fabergé egg, but in the, in the colors yeah. of the Ukraine. So like people's culture comes through. It's real. It was it's mind blowing. So. I mean, you know, you bring up the Ukraine. It's easy to forget we're here in Canada. There's still a war going on, and like Microsoft. Obviously, and people are working. People yeah. are getting. They're giving us creative. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's interesting. We worked on a campaign to help the Ukraine oh, government yeah. with Zelensky, uh, the president, just to make sure that people know that Ukraine's still open. I mean, the the fight they have, but Microsoft has been so involved in so many different things. How do you choose where to? To, to, to step in and, and obviously also the technology behind most of the governments and, and but picking and choosing I'm yeah. sure of like what causes or what efforts to do like that comes through you know your department also right? Yeah I think mostly it's like this intersection of like social movement and focus truth and storytelling potential mm. like we kind of you know what there's actually a little thing here it says um you've said in the past and yes. i'm going to read from oh, the okay. quote me the best examples of creativity and storytelling resonate with people because they connect with some truth a social truth a product truth an emotional truth and usually all of them there you go i said that where was where I? was that that's i clearly that's was not drinking very, all night yeah, no that's a very no that wasn't at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning at the, the uh <laughs> All right, Kathleen, we're going to uh, go into the lightning round okay. of questions. This Are there probably, prizes? There might be prizes. I, feel the, <laughs> I see some cards. There is a Yay. sunglass thing down there. Uh, I don't know if they're your level sunglasses. No, I no. see a lot of luxury this way, right? Yeah, no, I see. We'll, uh -huh. we'll see what we can do. I see what we can do. <laughs> Books or movies? Books. Favorite book? I'd probably say To Kill a Mockingbird. Great movie, too. Talking or texting? Talking. Is there someone you don't want to talk to that you always text? You're like, I can't. You know what I find? The person you don't want to talk, talk to and you want to text is the person you should talk to. Uh, are you a night owl or a morning person? I was a dyed little night owl. Like, 1 o'clock in the morning was my, like, because when you have kids, you yeah. you got to wait till everybody goes to bed. All the laundry's done. Everybody's, and it's like, yeah. now it's. But I've evolved. I kind of now have shifted to, like, I get up in the morning, and I kind of like that quiet time, too. Speaking of your kids, Jameson and Katie, they, they, they've been very involved sometimes in the they, Microsoft <laughs> campaigns. And Kathleen would be like, hey, Katie found this song that we should use. And we're like, what? <laughs> and it's pretty. And it was, and then we, Rob, we, you wanted to hire her at one point. Yeah, Katie, come work for us. good at this. But they're both teachers. They're both teachers, yeah. yeah. But they're, they, they too, like music like I like yeah. music. And since I stopped with 1979... Everything after that, they know. So we would use their brains. I think you go to the generation you're trying to impact. For sure, right? Yeah, I mean, I think we put some tracks on there. <laughs> Katie was like, "I don't think so. <laughs> These are late." I'm like, oh. And the great thing is, the creatives like that could be resentful, right? Yeah, but I, but they they start to appreciate it when she picked that. Let's tell the world. Remember on the baby yeah, spot? Yeah, it's the amazing. Eric whatever his name was. Yeah, it was and then Jameson picked Rachel Patton on uh, the holiday spot. Yeah, I remember this. So uh, we're talking about music. That the last song you listened to? I just listened to Bob Marley this morning don't worry uh, well, no not, it wasn't don't worry be happy it was everything's gonna be all right yeah great song great yeah. song, Bob Marley. hidden secret talent of kathleen hall you know i'm a knitter i can make you a sweater i, I know you're a knitter. i can't believe i forgot you're i a can knitter. make you a sweater in a day i am a flautist i play the flute like lizzo Get the yeah what are you talking about <laughs> I, this thing it makes i this i had no idea i do i have two flutes and a piccolo was the the scene and does does uh Will Ferrell pull a flute out? Does he play the flute in Anchorman? Is that the? I don't remember. Oh, he's on in the bar. He plays the flute. That's a flute. If it was yeah, this, yeah. it's a flute. Yeah. Wow. Are, do you still play? I still play. It's very therapeutic. Not as much as I would like, but I do. God damn! Yeah. I wish we had a flute here. Yeah. I, mean, I wish we had. A flute. I would play in a minute. Danny Boy, right off the top of my head, no problem. Amazing Grace, I can do those after. Is there a video? Is there like a YouTube video? No, we do not publish. We do not post. So, if you die, though, Rob, I'll come with Danny Boy. Yeah. 
Uh, favorite season. I like fall. I don't like sweating. I like being hot. Yeah. I like fall. And somebody said to me, what What must have been like when this was just like vacation place? I go, they weren't huffing up and down the closet. They racing. They're, they're sitting on an umbrella. Me, me like, and I were at our, 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 our boss, Mark Reed. He was, he was doing an interview. And I'm like, we got to go. And I'm like, I forgot my pass. Oh, shit. I have to go back up. And like Beacon's calling me like, I'm like, because I'm like, I hate being late. And yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to be late for you. I was like, where is this beach? I've been here three times, but I can't find it. I'm like, Nikan, you go. It was crazy. So I'm running, and I'm like, and and then once I start like you running. You can't. You I'm can't move faster. Yeah. And then I'm like, God damn it. Kathleen's going to be down there already. I'm going uh-huh. to roll up, strolling up. Like, hey, how's yeah. it going? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I can't. The good news or bad news is I can't go fast right now. Yeah, so i got to plan it. You've yeah, had, yeah. had a foot. You've had a, I've you've had had a, a lot of foot I had a lot of canned feet issues. These it's are, ankle, actually. I broke my fibia. Shoes. These, these, these are these new are, ones. No, these are the Gucci's I've been wearing all these years. Really? Yep. Look at how fat and swollen it is already. Yeah. Doctor, look at the doctor on that. <laughs> uh, Tosh, one of our uh, people who works for us, who works for Eric Monet, she she was at the uh, Ogilvy space and fell, fell down and hurt her leg. Oh, my so, gosh. Uh, so it's a uh, can. It's dangerous. A, it's a dangerous yep. place here. All right, we're going to keep going here. Uh, if you could hang out with a fictional character, who would it be? Oh, God, Rob, you should have told me these ahead of time. Jonathan Sanchez, this guy who works with, with, with us, with Beacon and us, uh, he writes these questions. and he's, he's just, They're good. Wow, a fictional book. Oh, because I'm such, I read, I, I mean, I'm a voracious reader. So like, Don't give me some obscure thing that I won't know. No, no. Let's, go, like, let's go general audience. No, I was going to go kind of general audience. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I might hang out with Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> I just went to my head. Well, I wouldn't have believed this if it wasn't for the flute playing. That feels like well, I mean, the background of Mary Poppins. The hills are alive. I don't know. I don't know. I've never seen Mary Poppins. It's just, like, oh, my God. Two favorite movies. I love uh, Mary Poppins, and I love Sound of Music. I, and so, again, I must have been, like, frozen in time. Oh, so, so I, I was singing Sound of Music. I the was Hills Are Alive, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's it's common. Two movies I'm probably never going to watch. Oh, oh, you got it. Unless I'm... Um, Come on. Christopher Plummer? Drunk. If I have to be... Really, someone has to I'll make you. pay me. Okay. Three items on your bucket list. I am going to take a plane, land somewhere in the British Isles, buy a motorcycle, and start driving through Europe by myself. Okay. That's one. That's one. Um, another bucket list. I want to do all the national parks in the United States. I would love to do that. Like in an RV? Like you? I picture you and Gary. And oh, no, 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 Gary. No, no. <laughs> no, Gary. No, Gary. Sorry, Gary. We know Gary's no, not no, going to no, listen no. to this. It would be real. Gary's Kathleen's husband. I want- <laughs> very good looking. He's a very cool guy. Has a really ugly yellow giant truck. <laughs> a Tonka uh, truck. That, Tonka truck yeah. that's not allowed. In, in my driveway. It affects my sensibilities in a negative way. So then uh, last last thing on the bucket list. Um, I think take my kids on safari i spent some time in kenya in college and, yeah. and right after college and i want to go back and i want to have them see it before it's really not what it is anymore you know i was dragged to a safari by my wife laura who kathleen knows uh who loves all types of things you should vacation with her versus she might get a motorcycle with me, yeah. me. If she would do it all I, we'll send I, gary I with that. you <laughs> i'd crash the <laughs> motorcycle she doesn't trust me to get one she's like you have terrible attention <laughs> Hit, you'll crash, you'll do something stupid. And uh, so we went on a safari in, 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 in South Africa, and it's pretty hard, you know, because like you're in the middle of this and you can't leave the, the, the camp, yeah. you know, the, the resort. Yeah, right. At, and you wake up at like five and you go out for a couple hours. Then you get back and sleep. And then you got to go, go back. And then you're like, you have nothing to do. Uh, you have to go, they're like, we have to go see a kill. And I'm like, it's so weird. That you want to see yeah, yeah. things, or it's a, but like by I was kind of bored with it by the fifth day. Yeah, like, how many days? That's good for you. This? Five days is good. Yeah, for I, you. I was like, I go, I want a human to fall off and get eaten. I'm so bored. I was like, <laughs> I gotta spice this thing up. She's like, you're an, you're an animal, uh, <laughs> but it's worth seeing. Uh, the giraffes to me were like uh, the giraffes and the elephants. That, that, that elephants to me are yeah. the most amazing animals in the world. But uh, they chase you. You know, the the young the bulls are called the, the teenagers. They chase the. The trucks, trucks, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. They're like, and the guy, it's like one guy driving and one guy with a gun. If God forbid you have to ever have to use it, I'm like, what is the time when you use the the? <laughs> How bad is it? Have to be? This, 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 well, we had a we had a Jurassic Park moment where they literally said that they broken through the fences. The elephants came over because it was a drought. And they had watered the property where we were staying. And they and I'm like, are we in Jurassic Park? I'm like, what is going on? They broke in the fences. Go to karaoke song. Uh, we know you play the flute, but if you have to drop the flute, 
Is it Jethro Tull? That's the only. Uh, I can do Jethro Tull. I can do do the. You can do Aquaman. I can do do the hustle. Do, do the hustle. I can do Nutcracker. I can do all of it. I, I, you know. Wow. Yeah. Right. You know, the, you know dance whether it was dance band or orchestra. Um, what was the question? Go to karaoke. Go song. to karaoke. My mother is a beautiful singer, or was a beautiful singer, and she said to me often, Kathleen, That's my father, yeah. you do a lot of things really well. <laughs> Don't sing. So I am not one that will put my hand up for karaoke. Right, I did do crazy. Right, right, I would do Patsy Cline crazy once on a cruise. That's about yeah, right. Yeah, really, really good alcohol. You're a lover of the Ford brand. So if anybody from Ford's out there listening, <laughs> I am. Kathleen loves Ford more than anything. I do. I think. And you have I think I have nine Ford nine, vehicles nine right Ford now. Vehicle, but you have like a. We have uh, three Broncos. We got a Bronco Raptor. But you have an old Ford. I got too. a '69 pickup. I picture you in that. Singing crazy. Yeah, and that's when I'm going to go cross country into the national parks. It all comes together. You think? Yeah. Okay, I like it. Okay, so again, Ford Corporation, <laughs> one of the best marketers in the world, loves Ford. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there, everybody. My dad invented the minivan. We had a Ford club wagon because I had five kids, you know, we had five kids, so yeah. and skis and windows on the side. It was four on the column, so we all learned to drive that, and that's how he drove us all around. Before there was a minivan. Oh, I thought he literally invented Like, well, to me, he did. I'm like, forget Lee Iacocca. My dad invented yeah, yeah. the minivan. <laughs> uh, last two questions. If you could only put one app on your phone for the rest of your life, what would the app be? I think it would be Instagram. I Why? I just like the visual focus. I like I like photos. It's quick. I don't know. It's con- I feel con- I feel like it's, I can control it a little bit more than other things. I was yeah. very early not a fan of Facebook for some experiences. That I had. And then there's this one that I went to, like, blank in my head, where I have this app that identifies any plant you look at. Just You just hold it up, and, like, it tells you what it is. And then it'll tell you if it's sick or not and what you should do to it. It's called Sick Plant. It's called Sick, know, it's called it's sick Plant. It's a great it's app. Great. It's called sick... Mine would be Spotify. I, you know, I'm not... Oh, not, shoot. Not because we're here at the yeah. Spotify studios that are gorgeous, by the way, here in Cannes. It's just something about having the... It's like a friend that it could... You know, it's either podcasts, and then it's you can listen to the New York Times. Or you can yeah, yeah, you're right. And music saves you in a lot of ways. So why don't be Spotify? No, and you're right. Is I constantly. Yeah, but you should go with the plant, the sick plant app. I got fun. <laughs> By the way, I said the one app for the rest of your life. And you're like, this I didn't. Say, this I didn't say. That, like, I oh, said in a blink moment that one popped yeah. up because I do use it. I, my new house, I got all these like apple fruit. I don't know what these trees are, and I just click it and I go, oh, sure, that's a persimmon. Like, you cut to everybody else is going to be listening to music, and this is like. Happening. No, you're right. I live on Spotify, which is kind of funny, but it didn't come to my brain immediately. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. There's a lot of logos around. <laughs> um, you know what it is? It's, it's a sun- my main It's screen. just sunglasses. <laughs> See, if you had, if you, it's you not the rosé. All right, last question for your uh, Kim Carnes voice. One piece of advice you would give your teenage self? Uh, don't care so much about others. Like thinking, you know, I think it's that old saying: like you spend half your life worried about others think of you, and the rest of your life you realize no one was really thinking about you. Yeah. I think that's that stress of like, what are people? Gonna what do? are people like? What am I gonna? Uh, also, there's a lot of stress around. Who am I going to be? What am I going to do? Like, what? It's like I hated my twenties. Like all the decisions, where are you going to live? Who might you marry? What what job are you going to have? Like it's like stress. Like I don't know. Just chill. It all it all happens. You know, you're the second person who said that. Chill. I think Fernando. Yeah. Said chill. chill also. So two of the best creative marketers in the world. Their advice to their teenage self would be to chill. Yeah. There we go. Well, what a great way to end uh, screaming creativity. Thank you to Emily and all the Spotify crew. Thank you to our crew. There's Nikon over there. Well, and thanks course, for having me. Super thank fun. You. Yeah, this is super fun. I feel like I need to do it again. I could do better. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we can do part two in some ways. So come to New York. We'll do part two because we, we, we film these, and, and hopefully everybody will enjoy this one. This, is, this has been awesome. It's been fun. Thanks for having me. Screaming Creativity is produced by WPP and Hogarth and edited by Rob C. Ward at BCW.